Behind me is the brand new Mazda CX-70. This is their latest two-row SUV. And we're gonna talk about how Mazda does things differently and why this vehicle is very different than a lot of the others in the class. This CX-70 slots in between the CX-90, which debuted last year, which is a three-row SUV, and the CX-50, which is their two-row SUV, which is a little bit more sporty, a little bit more off-road focused. So this is a fairly large two-row SUV. This is actually one of the largest in the class. Now, Mazda hasn't really told us much about this vehicle, so their press release is very light. So we're just gonna go into the speculation zone here a little bit. So humor me, and let me see, you can tell me if you agree with me a little bit later in the video or down below in the comments. So first off, we have some really, really nice styling. I think Mazda likes to do things differently in terms of the design language of their SUVs than all the other cookie cutter SUVs that are out there. And one of the things that I think Mazda that really separates them is you'd think they are competing with the Toyotas of the world, the Nissans of the world, the Hondas of the world, the Koreans and all that. But I think they're actually competing with Audi, with BMW, with the German manufacturers, with Land Rover. And because this, not this particular one, but because we get an inline six engine, and we'll talk about that in the other vehicle, the inline six version in a moment, but this is a four cylinder. This is a PHEV they're calling it. Now, I don't like PHEV. I don't think that sounds very good. Let's just call it a plug-in hybrid. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. But first, let's just talk about this styling, this design language that they've got going on here. So what I think they're doing so well is this new front grille, which is wide, and it sort of gives the impression of the vehicle being lower and wider. Look at the stance of this. It's very, very athletic. What I like here too is also with the Mazda wings, we sort of have them mirrored in the headlights, little, little wings in the headlights here. So we've got this hexagonal grille. It is sort of glossy. I think that's the design aesthetic they're going for. And we have these cutouts over here too with sensors. But overall, the whole thing just has a really low slung sort of aggressive look. And this separates it from the competition too. We don't have a lot of sharp corners. It's not so angular. It's really rounded and sort of wide and low. And I think the, the design language is really quite nice in this. Coming all the way to the back here too, we have this really, really nice taillight design that they're doing here too, which again echoes their other products. So we have the design language which is very consistent between the CX-70 and the CX-50. But let's talk about the powertrain. So officially they've told us almost nothing, but I'm going to speculate here. And you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but let's go into the speculation zone. So this of course is a plug-in hybrid vehicle, which means that on the CX-90, and that's where I'm taking all this information from, from the CX-90, on the CX-90, what you've got is a battery pack that is roughly 18 kilowatt hours. And that has made it to a four cylinder, 2.5 liter engine up front. And the total output, at least in the CX-90, is around 320 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. That is quite a bit. On the CX-90, it's a 2.5 liter and it has made it to a rather large electric motor of about 173 horsepower all on its own. And you should be able to get roughly 25 miles of driving just on electricity alone before the gas engine kicks in. So the advantage is you should be able to do most of your commuting with this vehicle purely on electricity alone. So with electricity and gas alone, you should be able to get roughly 56 MPGE. It's one of these EPA things, but you should be able to get very, very good gas mileage until the battery runs out. Once it runs out, you're gonna be getting mid 20. So that's pretty good for a large SUV like this. Let's talk about the interior and how Mazda does things a little bit differently here too. So this is a more premium type of cabin compared to the competitors that I think are gonna be at roughly the same price point as this. So my impression is here, we've got some very nice materials. We have 
feels like leather over here, soft touch over here. We have a very large display, which does not look so tacked on to the dashboard like the iPad and the dash that's been so popular for all these years. I like that. We have this nice stitching that goes all the way across here, it goes on the armrests, and it goes on these seats too. So this is the upper trim level. I think this is the probably the premium or the premium plus. We have this insert in here too, which is very nice also. Now, one thing I've noticed compared with the CX-50 is that I thought in the CX-50, this was kind of hard and a little bit uncomfortable. It's very comfortable the way I'm sitting here now, right now. And I like the use of materials. They all feels really premium. Look at the sort of brushed, simulated brush. It's not actually brushed, but the simulated brushed uh, aluminum here. It's printed. It looks very, very nice. Got a small shifter. It's beautiful physical controls for all your heating and ventilation. That is great. They didn't put it all up here. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And we've got a lot of storage in here too for your cups. And in the center console, okay, it's not the deepest center console in the world. We got a controller and the driving display, the driver display is really bright. It's really big. The black levels look really good. It's a very attractive looking display. I've got a dual sunroof with a little bit of rain coming in here. Now let's just step into the back. Going into the back, I've got a lot of knee room here. I've got eight inches, 10 inches, something like that. I've got lots of space to put my feet underneath the seats too. And I've got, I've got loads of headroom back here. I am five foot nine, no problem at all with headroom. And this is a really, really big cabin. Oh, we got some nice little touches here too. Look at that. Look at that. That's kind of nice. I like this aluminum treatment over here too. Big uh, cup holders down here too. And we have USB-C and the passengers have their own heating and ventilation controls back here and heated seats too. Super, super nice. This is a very large two row SUV. Continuing around the back, you can see we've got a lot of cargo space here. So I'll show this to you a little bit more on the six cylinder and that is annoying, that beeping, sorry about that. We got power folding seats down there too. So this folds completely flat. You can see there is a ton of space back here. So I'll show you a little bit more on the six cylinder. This is the second car they're showing us today. This is the inline six. So this is a 3.3 liter inline six. It is hybridized, mild hybrid. And it also comes with something called M Hybrid Boost. So again, I'm going off of the CX-90. This is the same platform, essentially, as the CX-90. This is probably just a little bit smaller. They call it the large platform. Not a very exciting name. And of course, this one is in black. So what I think we're getting over here with this inline six is the thing that really separates this from the rest of the Asian competition. Because an inline six gives you so much more smoothness. It sounds nicer. It's much more refined. It's something that really separates this from the Japanese competition. We're up there with Mercedes. We're up there with the BMW. We're up there with Land Rover and even Jeep that all have inline six motors. And so this tells me that this is the real competition. Those brands are the real competition for this new CX-70. And the big question is, can they do it for the price that they're gonna sell this at. Now, we don't have any pricing yet. I'm gonna tell you what I think this is gonna be at the end of the video, and I think it's gonna be a lot less than the German competitors. Now, the second powertrain option is this inline six, and I'm gonna speculate again from what I know from the CX-90. It's a hybrid with a 16.6 .6 kilowatt hour battery, and I think we're gonna see anywhere from 280 to 320 horsepower with about 369 pound-feet of torque should be a very powerful SUV. Because Mazda is using an inline six, that makes more room for a better suspension compared to most of the competitors that use a McPherson strut. And we're able to do a proper double wishbone suspension. The big advantage with a double wishbone suspension is that when you're cornering, it keeps the tires flat to the road. It increases the contact patch and that improves front grip. And that's gonna give us a little bit more of a sporty demeanor. And that is the way that Mazda is positioning this. This is still a vehicle that you're going to be able to go camping with. You're going to be able to go a little bit of light off-roading. You're going to be able to take this and do your active sports that you want to do. You've got a suspension that's not tuned the way the others are, which is typically pretty soft. So this is going to be a little bit more sporty, a little bit more driver focused. And I think that's really the main reason why they went with the inline sixes really for 
driver dynamics because after all Mazda is really all about the driver experience. So this particular trim is the premium trim which is one step down from the premium plus and we've got this beautiful Napa leather in here. I really really like this color. These seats are incredibly nice. I really like this beautiful stitching that we got here too and the material selection and the way they've the interplay between the different elements between this metal and the leather over here everything looks really nice this is not cookie cutter i really appreciate the the attention to design that they've done in here this is very nice now we have again a very very large display i'm not quite sure how large it is you can control it with this trackpad down here you can also touch it too although i'm not quite sure how well it's going to work right now because the vehicle is off let's check out the glove box look at that isn't that super exciting this is a really nice interior i really like this it seems very comfortable it seems very premium this seems like they're going to be able to compete with the germans i'm actually pretty impressed with this we have a double sunroof here too everything just feels really quite premium look at how much space i've got this is massive you can fit bicycles in here you could fit probably not a kayak but you could fit you could actually sleep in here if you want to so there is just a ton of space back here so this is they say one of the largest capacity two row suvs on the market so you can see you've got this little extra cubby hole down here for your your activities so here's my guess on pricing based on the cx50 and the cx90 i think this is going to come in i think it's going to start probably in the high 30s to low 40s and go up to maybe the mid 50s at the highest if you enjoyed this video i've got another one right over here you should definitely check it out my name is eric thanks for watching